So we have three presentations to get through in this panel. Uh, the first is from Matt Beck. Uh, they've been involved with the Wikimedia movement since 2014 as a contributor to Pitfall, Wikipedia, and Wikimedia Commons. He's also working actively in sort of developing Wikimedia community groups. Then we'll have uh, Kima. Uh, they manage the competition program of Wikipedia, uh, sorry, Wikimedia Indonesia. And this includes planning and executing competitions, seeking potential partners for collaboration, and evaluating the results. And finally, we'll have Imelda, who's a volunteer from the Philippines that works in Central Pitfall, Tagalog, and English Wikipedia and Wikidata, and as an administrator of Central Pitfall Dictionary and other Philippine Wiki projects under incubation. Uh, so each presentation will be 10 minutes. Um, we can have a couple of questions at uh, Q&As um, afterwards. Um, but first, we have uh, Wikilog uh, in the Philippines, a five-year review. So come on up. <laughs> Let's get started. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So I'm going to share the most awaited photography competition in our country, which is the Wiki Loves Rick in the Philippines. So let's let me take first a quick background. So Wiki Loves Earth is an annual photographic competition held throughout May to June. Participants take pictures of local natural heritage and scenic landscape in their countries and upload them to Wikimedia Commons. Photos will be under a free license, which can be reused not only in Wikipedia, but everywhere by anyone. So the first Wiki Loves Earth competition was held in 2013 in Ukraine, and the contest became international in 2014. Yes. Okay, so how to take part? So you have there, for the participant, you have to review the timeline and the rules in your country. So general time for the international Wiki Loves Earth is May 1 to July 31, but local timelines vary, so you have to check your country if you're taking part in a contest and a specific timeline. So next, you have to start preparing your submission, so you must register or log in in Wiki Commons, so you have to check the list of natural objects in your country and take inspiring photos of them or find ones you already have. Next, you have to check the eligibility criteria for your pictures. So they should be self-taken, uploaded during the contest period, contain an identified national monument, and then have a free license at least two megapixels of size. Okay, so if you're going to organize, you have to create or join a team in your region. So in the Philippines, so feel me to community. Okay. Second, become part of the Wiki Loves Earth family. You have to reach out to the international team at WLE team at wikimedia.org to join the team in your region or country or to create your own. Next, you have to coordinate the contest. You can create a website landing page and then prepare a list of nature monuments, promote the contest, and then you can also ask for some funding or rapid grants if you're going to have prizes. Next, you have to set up a selections of winner. You have to set up a jury that selects 10 winners for your country and then announce them on commons to the international team by the deadline. Okay, so you have here, you can also modify the competition rules in your country. So that one, you have all entries must be your own work. Do not manipulate in your images and make sure that there is no watermarks. Next, all, all posts must be uploaded within May 1 to June 13, 2022 to be eligible. So all posts must be licensed under CC by SA. So participants must have an active email account if the organizer needs to contact. So you have to upload photos from the protected landscapes and seascapes and natural parks in the Philippines. Captions and descriptions are required, so that's for that to add categories also. So make sure that you are not uploading duplicate images. So common practical rules, you have to sign in or create a new account on Wikimedia Commons. So you have to name your code as well. You need to use the upload button and then you have to share your upload success on social media 
use using hashtags because in the Philippines we have um, social media accounts like Facebook or Instagram, and you have to wait patiently for the result. Okay, for the judging criteria, you have here is the technical quality talks about the sharpness, use of light, perspective, etc., and the originality and the usefulness of the image for Wikipedia. Okay, so you can also use the jury tools. We have one page. You can search about that. It's a photo evaluation tool used in Wikilove's competition. We have also WLX jury tool. Also, image selection and rating tool for photo contest, for example, Wikilove's monuments and Wikilove's earth. Okay, so the first edition of Wikilove's earth in Philippines was held in 2018. So it aims to promote the natural heritage sites of the Philippines. Okay, so in 2018, 32 countries participated in Wikilove's Earth. So we have we received 1,006 images from 185 participants. So we have here Glen Penny Palacio Doyle River in Batilla won the first prize. So it is our the first prize winner. So here's our Wikilove's Earth 2018 finalist of the top 10. So mostly seascape or landscape. Next, we have the Wiki Loves Earth 2019. So in 2019, we have 37 countries joined Wiki Loves Earth. So in the second edition, we got 900 entries from 154 participants, 84% of which are new contributors. So and then also 90% of the images have been used in Wikipedia articles. Next, okay, that. This one is the finalist, 2019 finalist. Okay, so luckily we have the sixth place winner international in the international competition, the Blue Water Cave by Glenn Palacio. Okay, so we can love Earth 2022. So we had 34 participating countries. We got 970 entries from 250 participants. So 19, 91% of which are new contributors. So we have 80% of images has been used in Wikipedia articles. So that's the Mayon Volcano. In... Okay, so here's our finalist for 2020. Next. Okay, so again, we got eight place winner in the international competition, the crown within the lake by Michael Angelo Luna. And also the Nobel Prize, the Philippine Eagle by Shannon Aki, so 29th place winner. Okay, moving on to 2021. Okay, Wiki Loves Earth had 34 participating countries. For so the first edition, had 1,005 entries from 198 participants, 89 percent of which are new contributors. 38 percent so far, the largest of the images has been used in Wikipedia articles. So we have Sabtang Island Batanes got the first prize. Okay, so in this edition, we have already separate category, the landscape and then the macro photography. Okay, so we have second place winner, the international competition, the brown toaded sunbird at Mapawa Nature by Dom's Junior Wildlife. Okay, now, so Wiki Loves Earth had 37 participating countries, so the fifth edition had 982 entries from 150 participants, okay, 78% of which are new contributors, and then 11% 11 of images have been used in Wikipedia articles. So we're just going to wait for the winner, an international winner. Hopefully, we can make it again. Okay, so here is the final list for Wiki Loves Earth 2022. Okay, so Philippines has consistently participated in Wiki Loves Earth since 2018. Okay, so how did we do that? So we conduct outreach activities. Okay, we started as being at least three members. We have Irvin Troy, and then later on we got also this one. Okay, some volunteers joined the group. And then also from our members, uh, for the participants, they already conducted there also the photo walk or outreach activities. 
Okay, so if you're not into photography, you can also support the campaign by having edit accounts where you can add images or create articles. Okay, we conduct trans photo walks also involving um, pictures. Okay, women. And then we got partnership. So we went to an island and then we contacted the Department of Tourism. And then also we visited some schools. Okay, so that one is some of our awarding ceremony. You can invite winners and then let them at least share how they get the photos, how or or some experiences in in joining the contest. So we have team members. Okay, so for the local organizers, so we now that the project leads for 2018 to 2022. Okay, Irvin Santa Tomas, event manager for outreach and awarding. We have the from 2018 to 2019. Roy Beranya, so we have for promotion or social media. We have Malta Atabano for promotion. Okay, Judith Alinda E for advocacy. And then we have here Sayra Kia for of the advocacy. Okay, so we have also international organizers. Okay, Deep Lab Alam, so team, our team consultant from Nepal. We have Casey Balaga from India. And then Nabi K. Sapkota from also, also Nepal. Okay, for our jury, so we have Jun Pasa from the Philippines. Okay, Erwin Santo Thomas from the Philippines. And then we invited Habib Rabai from Bangladesh. There are also Indonesians. We have Chatero with from Thailand. Okay, he's there. Okay, thank you very much for supporting our campaigns, or not just only in Wikilabs Earth, but also in other Wikilabs competition. So we have Nir Madulal, also from Nepal. Moria this was from India, from India, and then Dean Sarsanana from Timor Leste. Okay, so what are our learnings? So what worked well? Okay, through the community outreach activities, we were able to reach the individuals and groups which helped increase awareness about the contest as well as the Wikimedia movement. So next, we have social media has proven its reach and influence. So aside from having um, central banners or promoting the competition in village ponds and other. You can also use social media to reach a wider audience. Of course, the conducting we can teach is like feeding two birds with one stone, being able to promote the beauty of the country and orient people about Wikipedia since we do not have a large number of contributors. And then collaboration is the key. Okay, so what did not work so well? So more on this one is more technical. So there were several reports from the participants whose user account or IP address was blocked. Therefore, they failed to participate in the contest. Unknown usernames had been vandalized in the page, the content page, so that there's a need to check it from time to time. So and then the internet speed of the Philippines is also frustrating whether it is Wi-Fi connection or mobile data. Okay, so Mabalas, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so we might do some Q and A at the end, if you'd like. Or did you want to answer a question now? No, <laughs> it's like that we're lost. Uh, okay, so for our next uh, presentation, uh, so have we got uh, Timos? Okay, hello everyone. Well, in this session, I will share about some of the stories of competition that we conducted in, in Indonesian Wikipedia or, my, or other projects. So, okay, my name is Dimas. I'm competition coordinator of Wikimedia Indonesia. If you maybe have some questions, you may drop some email to Dimas at dimas.hadrianto at wikimedia.org.id. Okay, so before I tell the stories about the competitions in Indonesia, maybe some of you will ask why competitions? Maybe uh, it's uncommon to see contests or Wikimedia projects. Maybe many of the uh, photo competitions like Wiki Loves Monument, which is many of East Asia regions cannot participate because of freedom of panorama, of course. And also we have Wiki Loves Earth that 
Philippines also has great experience to conducting them. And maybe one of the newest contest is Soundogo that maybe recently conducted about uh, audio logo and okay. okay, so maybe. So why competition? Nah, for the Indonesians, uh, contributing photos and articles is hard, especially in the countries where education curriculum is not teaching about academic writing at the first place. So Wikipedia is like uh, academic writing and much of Indonesians not very, very well accustomed to academic writing. So this is a major challenge. And the second one is the volunteer spirit is not, well, not, not fully grown on Indonesians. Well, because many of them doing training of writing Wikipedia, many of them asking what's what's benefit to us for contributing on Wikimedia projects. So yeah, this is why the competition, this is why we conduct the competitions because well, it may be benefits them, but also we also have some results that can be used on various Wikimedia projects. And the last one is uh, only focus on particular topics, mostly celebrities, or maybe some hip hop, or maybe AKB48, or the band, or boy band, etc. And for the hard topics like science, history, it mostly neglected. So the competition is a very easy way to introduce Wikimedia projects, increase the content and also content quality and quantity, and also to find new contributors simultaneously. So it's like a uh, one stones and you get on three worlds <laughs> and the competition also can be used to advocate several issues for for example like climate changes or maybe human rights so uh we also we have conducted many competitions well that's too much <laughs> but i only i only share about three competitions that have some interesting stories Okay, the first one is Euphoria. Uh, it's conducted in partnership with EU delegation in Indonesia. It's equivalent to embassy. And originally it's conducted in 2018 uh, as of for the celebration of Europe Day. But today uh, we already conducted yearly Euphoria with several teams. Okay, the first one, uh, most of the euphoria using these formats. So the participants need to create one long articles and two short articles. But not not every euphoria using these formats. So the first one is in 2018. It's about the EU as, as an institutions and also for the laws in the EU. Uh, for the prices for these competitions are laptops. And for the winner articles are GDPR, which is the winner's article in 2018. It's also a featured article in Indonesian Wikipedia. It's pretty ironic because Indonesian data protection is, well, pretty not so good. <laughs> it's like open data. <laughs> okay, the second one is Euphoria Wiki for Climate. It's about the climate changes. Why we choose these topics? Because Indonesia is uh, well known for uh, many of the population is climate change deniers. Uh, maybe it's the uh, twenty-one percent that population of Indonesians don't believe that climate change is real. So it's pretty concerning. So we are uh, using this momentum for to to celebrate the Environment Day and to also to introduce that climate change is real, guys. Really. <laughs> And for and for the articles, we know how much for science in United States and also in the world. Okay, during 2020, it's the pandemic time that, of course, the topics are uh, European Union response to COVID-19 pandemic because we already conducted large competition previously that during 2020, it's just a small challenge that all of the participants contributing on the same article to improve the same article about the European Union response to the top COVID-19 pandemic. So maybe the prices is a bit small, just vouchers. 
this by the this entry. In the 2021, uh, the Euro Korea has two competitions. The first one is Wiki for Women. It's okay. about uh, infographics with the uh, women rights topic. And the second one is Wiki for Human Rights. It's a uh, writing competition on Indonesian Wikipedia with a uh, human rights topic. So here's the winner. It's about uh, domestic abuse in Indonesia, child marriage in Indonesia. Yeah. And for the winners for the human rights, Wiki for Human Rights is Freedom of the Press in Indonesia, which is a uh, uh, have democratic backsliding and much of the journalists are prisoner as a prisoner. And for the 2022, we have also competitions in Korea. Uh, next month is Euphoria Wiki for Peace. It's, it's about Ukraine and European Union. So it's about Russian invasion to Ukraine and European Union response to Russian, Russian invasion. Okay, for the euphoria, the main obstacles are the first one is English sources only because uh, many of Indonesians don't have good proficiency in English. Uh, English sources only is uh, one of the major problems that that may hinder us from the reaching more participants because uh, more of, much, uh, many of Indonesians don't don't have good proficiency, including reading the text and comprehend its content. And the second one is rules and guidelines. Maybe it's too complicated. This is significantly impact on the infographic contest, which is many of the resources and material are copyrighted, so it cannot be uploaded on Wikimedia Commons. Okay, for the second one is for Mosa Nusantara Challenge. It's inter-affiliate challenge Wikimedia Indonesia and Wikimedia Taiwan. So uh, the the goals is uh, it, uh, participant in Indonesians uh, create about article with type one related themes in Indonesian Wikipedia and vice versa. The Taiwan participants creating Indonesian related topics on Mandarin Wikipedia. So it's a it's a simple challenge that uh, people may create some articles with this topic: history, geography, economics, culture, and politics. And eleven participants were re rewarded with souvenirs in each country. Okay, so for this for this challenge, we have obstacles. The first one is headache because we conducted this challenge is. Uh, a few months after another competition, so maybe participants uh, get bored of similar contests. And the second one is unfamiliar topics, but we prevent this uh, problem with allowing the participants to translate some of the articles from English Wikipedia or Mandarin Wikipedia, if they can, to Indonesian Wikipedia. Okay, the, the third one and the last one is uh, pretty interesting. This is our first spoken Wikipedia contest. So uh, participants may create the may create the recording of one of the featured articles in Indonesian Wikipedia into this into audio format. Uh, during this competition, we we are partnering with one of the largest communities in Indonesia that focusing on these topics is Indonesian voiceover, jobber, and announcer community. But unlike the I like the first sec, the previous one. Uh, this partnership is pretty informal that we are not stated this as a actual official partner, but we consulted with this community to ask uh, for the rules, guidelines, and also they supply us with judges, which has helped us to conduct this competition with with ease. Because it's first time, and actually, I don't know for the first time that uh, what what we need to prepare to conduct the audio competition. So the so the contestant need to create two recordings of the articles in Indonesian Wikipedia, one of mandatory article and one free featured articles. 
for the example, it's like this. It's a bit like a Spotify ads. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty bene beneficial for people with uh, disabilities that maybe have some difficulties to understand the screen recording because screen recording is maybe not be suitable to uh, Indonesian language. So we create this, we create this challenges Wikigalir as a spoken Wikipedia contest in Indonesia to help them to understand more about the articles on Indonesian Wikipedia. But uh, during this competition, we have main obstacles. The first one is more difficult because creating a recording is not as easy creating a, an article or a, write, a, writing, a writing article. And the second one is too overwhelming because yeah, too many guides, too many rules. So maybe uh, it's not it's not easy for the first time to understand. And the third one is the checking method. It's it's also not easy because uh, we need to hear to listen every every minutes of the recording. But one of one of more interesting interesting finding in Wikigalit is uh, more women participating in this competition than the previous competition. When the previous competition is dominated by male participants uh, during Wikigalit or spoken Wikipedia competition, it's more women that participating on this competition. So maybe it's pretty useful for the for women more participating in Wikimedia projects. Okay, so maybe one, when we creating a competition, uh, what we need to do? Okay, the first one is of, of course the topics. Uh, consider researching what needs to be improved on your Wikimedia projects. So just focus on the one thing uh, because it's less topic and less confusing just focus on the one topic that it's really need to be improved the second one is rules and guidelines uh, because much of the participants are newcomers it the rules and guidelines it's uh, like a mandatory because this is where participants may learn about wikimedia projects it needs to be as clear as possible and uh, and lastly prizes of course there is no competition if there is no prizes you may try a uh, smaller prizes like vouchers souvenirs or if you are prepare for more uh, for larger competition you may also want to give some yeah some grand prizes like laptops or podcast gadgets etc and to initiate partnerships uh, what is the final point to care of is the first one is, is be active, be active and patience because finding a potential partner is not easy. Sometimes uh, the candidate is like uh, ghosted us and not giving uh, follow up. So it's okay. Don't don't be so demoralized if an organization is not interesting. Not interested, so patience is bitter, but the fruit is sweet, of course. And the second one, explain a lot because it is partnership. Of course, the part of of course the partner candidate wants that this partnership will be beneficial for for them and for us. So we need to explain that uh, everything about Wikimedia projects that competition is conducted and what is benefit for them. Also, it's okay to compromise because, well, uh, some situation both participants both parties need to reach an agreement. So yeah, maybe the rules maybe can be uh, adjusted or the topics maybe uh, as request for uh, the other parties like 
like EU that maybe have requests or Ukraine, okay, we will we will conduct the competition about Ukraine topics, but the competition will be smaller because the topics of Ukraine is spread is not so not so many. And and the last one is always responsive because that's giving an impression that we are easy to cooperate and the partnership will be working for the long term. Uh, for summary, try to organize a more manageable competition first. Uh, maybe like Wiki Labs Earth is uh, pretty easy to first time well that to conduct competition. Uh, when initiating a partnership, keep the expectation low because yeah, so many but so many candidate partner candidate that may be ghosted us. Or maybe try to partner with other Wikimedia affiliates. Of course, Wikimedia Indonesia always open to competition with other uh, Wikimedia affiliates. And it's okay if the number of participants is below that, below the target, but at least there is a new content. As like the moon said, it's a, it ain't much, but it's on the floor. So thank you so much. Yeah. We will try and get the presentations afterwards, but um, our next um, guest is Ismalda. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I might have to do some slides so that we will be able to uh, go to the panel. So, uh, just a heads up. Uh, if you would want to participate in the demo, you will need a laptop. So I'm not sure if uh, the tool is already available on a mobile interface. So yeah, let's go. So I am again. I am Imelda. I am part of the Hotbridge Project team of the Winter So for today, I will be uh, the structure of my presentation is the uh, introduction for the Hotbridge Project team. The event center and the first feature of the event center is the event registration. So, uh, on each product team, uh, it's a really part of the team of the Media Foundation uh, that aims to like provide software solution to uh, company organizers' problem that we are like having now. And uh, the vision is for organizers to uh, have simplified workflows and more powerful tools, and for new organizers to be able to join as new community organizers. Uh, in a very easy way. Uh, so um, we are the company's product team. The first project is the event center. Uh, so uh, when the company's product team was developed, they conducted a research of, of, of more than uh, 50 community organizers and uh, the movement from the different regions, and uh, they gathered this information of what an organizer should want. And then the company's product team developed the actionable items. Uh, for example, uh, uh, an organizer wanted a central place to find tools and resources, and uh, the Hotbridge product team uh, decided to uh, develop this organizer center, including different tools on this building, event creation, registration, etc. Yeah. So, uh, event center in general, uh, uh, they envisioned to improve uh, organizers' tools in a very systematic way. And provide features for both the organizer side and the participant side, uh, which again focuses on improving and simplifying workflows. And it is a modular feature, which means uh, this feature will be developed separately and it is extensible, and uh, which means that uh, different features can be added by different developers. So, for the first feature, uh, it is the event registration. So this is all about the interface of the organized report and the things outside. So for the first feature, uh, we decided to create the event registration. So these are the top problems that they gathered from the survey uh, from the different community organizers. Uh, so mostly some of our organizers are using uh, apps and source on our station, for example, uh, event right or using this the meta signature by writing their four tildes as their signature to participate. So yeah, so why registration? Uh, uh, because uh, in software development, uh, we believe that uh, this registration feature is the very solid uh, building block in developing the other features that we are going to develop in the future. So as you can see, uh, from the registration portion, we'll be able to create that 
Gebet für ihn schreiben, dass er die Mutter schon los und dann ist hier. Uh, yep. Uh, in summary, uh, the benefit is we would like we would want to uh, uh, to give organizers a more easier way to create their registration and for participants to have uh, easier access to event and easier uh, participation experience. So uh, before I go to the demo, I'll uh, just uh, an introduction of. Uh, this tool, you can only access this tool under this namespace. So uh, we will be having new namespace. Uh, the, new, the namespaces are like user, user talk, something like that. So for this tool, uh, once we develop this extension, we will have new namespaces, which is which are the event and the event talk namespaces. So yep. Also, uh, we will need an event page. So this is an example of an event page. I know some of you are already pretty event pages. So for this example, we are using the commons namespace. But in the future, we are going to use the event namespace for these event pages. Okay, demo. So yeah, first we need to go to uh, this link. So these are the uh, available sites for testing the tool. Uh, again, I suggest that we use the test to um, yeah. All right. Welcome. So, uh, so this is a test wiki. You can create your account. Um, you may not use your uh, official Wikipedia account because this is just a test. Sorry. And you may already have a very small email. Oh, okay. Right, so everyone was able, was able to like create their own account. So yeah, again, to be able to enable the registration, we need an event page under the event namespace. So I will create an event page under an event namespace, for example. So as you can see, we don't have the event page yet, and then I will delete this. I will just like like something here to be able to create a page, for example, this. This an event page, but normally uh, being the organizers, uh, we'll have more information with the uh, uh, objectives and goals of the event. But for now, yeah, we are going to test the event page. Okay, so you will be able to see that your event page was successfully created when a pop-up window appears. So you can both create the registration through this pop-up or you can dismiss it. And do it later when you have no more time to do it. So, yeah. Enable registration. Yep. Here. Select add, cancel. And just 
this the start date of your event. This is uh, the start of your campaign when we need the tracking to start and when the tracking needs to end. You can also choose between an online event, an in person event, or both. Uh, when you choose uh, both, uh, it will uh, give you another field to refer you to add an event. You can always fill this information later. So, this goes where the meeting link, for example, Google or Zoom link, the country where is event happening, or if it's online, and then you will need to add a time. So, yeah. And this link goes for your uh, meeting invite, for example, Telegram, Facebook, chat, or WhatsApp. Again, so you can enable. It will show you a message that your registration has been enabled and will give you your event page, including your uh, registration. So, yeah. so combine. Combining this and the other one, what is this there? And this. So, uh, on the event page that I showed you earlier, it will add a banner on the top so that your participants will be able to register. And if anyone created a registration, so we will be able to see that. Uh, for this time, I'll show you how to join. No, no one created an event page. <laughs> so yeah, I will be able to show you how to join as a participant because nobody created a registration. So um, hopefully, I did create one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one. Yeah. So this is the interface for the participant side. As a participant, I will be able to see the details of each event and will be able to join uh, by, just by clicking this. And then also I will need to read the privacy and all and then continue the registration. And then when you see this checkbox, it means you are registered for the event, then you can always cancel your, your registration using the dashboard. So when someone registered for your event, you will always be here in your manage event. So this time again, I won't be able to show you because I need to have like two accounts to uh, be able to show you how to be a participant in organizer. But uh, ideally, the number of participants will appear here. And then other details of your event. Just by clicking above. Going back. So, yeah. Our budget timeline, you can always press the tool anytime on the better wiki, just speaking. And currently, we are still building the updates. For the expansion, and we have some ambassadors communicating with the community to collect feedback and how to use this tool. So, these are some young men are the ambassadors of the company by the team. And whenever they try to reach out to you, please uh, be able to like give them some time so that you may be able to develop the tool and improve them. So, what can you expect? I left July 2022, we released the V0. The V0 is the one that I demo. And V1 will be released at the end of November or probably early December. And V1 will give us uh, V1 will give support for organizer to specify event time zone and automatic confirmation to the emails and also add more organizers to an event. And there, there will be an integration to uh, the programs and events dashboard and event metrics. And also a, an option for a private registration. So uh, in the next few months, we need your help on how are you going to define the organizer user, right? Uh, because for now, uh, that's what we're not able to 
to be accessed by everyone. So uh, you will need to have a special right, an organized right, to be able to access the registration tool. And we all want you to be testers and try different versions of the app. Yes, okay. So after that, uh, uh, let us all help together to improve the tool. I mean, just uh, try to test it, test it again and over and over. I mean, test it over and over again because there are, there's always updates, uh, probably weekly, monthly, and leave us some feedback on our project page and subscribe to our mass message. And yeah, talk to you all. So, okay. Um, we don't actually have any time for the Q and A, um, so if we could just ask um, everyone individually.